On the afternoon of January 26, 1986, Yoweri Museveni, accompanied by some of his commanders, confidently arrived at Parliament. This was the day after the victorious NRA rebel forces had marched into Kampala, bringing an end to the five-year guerrilla war that dislodged Milton Oboti and his forces out of power. The moment Ugandans had long anticipated had come, the swearing-in of the new president. Do solemnly swear that I will well and truly exercise the functions of the high office of the President of the Republic of Uganda. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Republic of Uganda and that I will preserve and defend the Constitution and that I will do right to all manner of people according to the law established without fear or favor, affection or ill will, so help me God. The euphoria of a new dawn in the country was evidently unmistakable. The tension that had gripped the country for months broke into chanting and jubilation. It was a new dawn of peace and security, a new dawn that marked the end of decades of terror, mayhem and insecurity that what is happening today, what has, what has been happening in the last few days, is a mere change of guards. This is not a mere change of guards. I think this is a fundamental change in the politics of our country. Because in Africa we have seen so much change, that change has become meaningless. It's no longer change, but merely turmoil. This group getting rid of that group, and that group doing worse than the group it got rid of. Now, please, I do not count us in that category of, of people. The National Resistance Movement, I think, is a clear-headed movement with clear objectives and with good membership. With good membership. Of course, we may have some burdens even among us because we are part and parcel of the society of Uganda as it is. And in that way, you may not be able to completely guard against infiltration by the wrong elements. But since it is the, it is the deliberate policy of our movement to ensure that we uplift the quality of the politics of our country, I think it makes a very big difference from the situation in which we were, where the very people in power were they themselves encouraging evil instead of trying to combat evil. I think this, this is a slightly different situation. It was difficult to believe that after fighting for this long, we were now the ones in charge. So the, the, the swearing in, the, 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 the things that followed were, for some time, you didn't believe that we, we really the war was coming to an end. We knew that we still had to clear the rest of the country, but the fact that we are now the government uh, uh, took a few weeks to sink in. 
It was a new political administrative setup that was received with a lot of enthusiasm from the Ugandan population. A system that was spearheaded by patriotic Ugandans who had sacrificed their careers to restore sanity in the country. The Tumwines, who are big generals now, he could have remained a teacher. He had things to do. He was a qualified, he was a graduate. He had, if you look at Dr. Vesija, he had even a job in, in Mombasa, Mombasa General Hospital, although it was not in Uganda, but he had a job there. He willingly and personally left his job to come and help in, in the bush. So it's not an issue of, of people had nothing to do. Because those who joined, who started the, the first 27, we are, we are in the army or in politics, and they had their own means. And those who, whom we went into, into the bush and mobilized had their homes there, they, they had their gardens there, they had their, their animals there, they were farmers who were able to look after themselves without NRA, NRM. But then, because there was something, a conviction that something was wrong with Uganda and it needed to be fixed, Prior to this, Uganda had gone through two decades of political, social and economic instability. From the unresolved problems of post-independence politics, Uganda latched into the disastrous military dictatorship of Idi Amin in 1971, which only worsened the situation in the country. State-inspired terror, lawlessness, breakdown of state institutions, culminating into the total collapse of the economy. The exit of Idi Amin in 1979, the population was hopeful that the time and opportunity had come to right the historical wrongs in the country. Ugandans were promised a government of national unity, but this was not to be. The political class shamelessly reverted to the old politics of sectarianism. This dashed the hopes and expectations of the people of Uganda. The country found itself latching towards the 1980 elections without first resolving the issues which had led to the instability in the past. The election process went ahead amidst the confusion and political intrigues of the politicians, each determined to take power by all means, including manipulating the results. The way the military commission chairperson called Paul Mwanga behaved you know, when he said that the result must not be declared by the Electoral Commission, but by after he has approved. That was the shortest way. And uh, secondly, <clears throat> those of us who participated know what happened. For example, my own constituency, what was called Bushenyi East, the day of the election, Ours was postponed, <laughs> you know, uh, and we, we had it the following day when everybody, uh, all the machinery was in place. I mean, you could go to a place and find uh, there were 300 more votes than the voters on the register and so on and so forth. Indeed, as feared, the 1980 elections was stolen in favor of the Uganda People's Congress led by Meriton Obote amidst the disenchantment of the other political parties and the population at large. UPC has got 145. UPC of Nkumanam Mbutan. DP has got 4,000. The Democratic Party, which many believed to have won the election, remained indecisive and instead chose to go ahead with the charade as an opposition party much the disappointment of its supporters. Supporters like Serumaga, who was outside the country, Kaira, and uh, we had uh, supporters like Haji Amin Mutiaba and, uh, and, and others. So we decided that wing, uh, what they called my wing, decided to go militaristic. And uh, the people who said for us we are for peaceful coexistence, we did not interfere with them, we left them, they went to parliament. Yoel Kaguta Museveni was among the participants in these elections. But unlike the rest, 
he promised to lead a protracted people's struggle if the elections were stolen. When we were campaigning as UPM, we made it very public that uh, if elections are rigged, we definitely will not take it. We shall go the both. But I think, fortunately, the UPC government didn't ever took us seriously. They thought we were just a, a bravo, bravo by the, these young fellows. But eventually, the last decision was taken not as UPM, but by a few individuals. Because there was a fear of leakage. And then the Florence, Florence, Florence soldiers who were in the army were also very, very uncomfortable. They were being discriminated against, they were being locked up. Were, so there was a situation, why would we handle the situation? And Roberto was not prepared to, to accommodate everybody. Yeah. I'm sure if Roberto, for example, after the election had said, let's form a government of national unity, I think we would have, we would have found it difficult to go to the bush. Sure. I'm sure it would have been, been difficult. Because this is what I had said, okay, I have stolen, but you can share. <laughs> but uh, because the, 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 the uh, our promise we made, these young fellows who were in the army and being mistreated, uh, and then UPC behaving in the way like a rogue, you know. People beat me up, how did you vote, blah, 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 don't get sort, don't get this. So, in a sense, the institution uh, forced us to, to, to continue what we wanted. The declaration that, yes, Ugandans have decided to go to the bush and to fight the regime and let the world know that it is today that we have started was 6th February of Kabamba. For the next five years, the NRA waged a people's struggle in what came to be known as the World Triangle. As a protracted people's struggle, the population was slowly mobilized into the movement, gradually building up capacity to wage war against Milton Obote's forces. All these recruits, all these soldiers you see here, were not soldiers before. They were peasants or sons of peasants and uh, we have been mobilizing among the peasantry mainly. But also we have been organizing among other strata, like for instance the intellectuals from the towns, and also in the working class, and also the big businessmen. And the good story I like telling about is this old man in my area, whom we went to visit and found in a banana plantation, uh, looking after his banana plantation, and we told him, we greeted him and we said we are the we are the guerrillas you have had who are who want to remove this government and put a people's government. And he said, What? My children, my children, go away. And the government a quarter coach. What does government have to do with me? I don't I I see government once every year when they come for their poor tax, I pay their tax, they go away. I go back in my banana plantation, I eat my matoke, I make my beer. What does government have to do with me? And he said, ah, you go, you go. Then we said, Mzei, that is the point. We would like to tell you that actually you should be part of government. He said, how do I become part of government? We say, you see, we would like to form committees where you are the ones who will influence your situation, your area, and decide for your area. He said, how? He said, please allow us a small chance to teach you or to explain to you, he said, okay, tell me how I will be part of government. And that was the starting point. And he became one of our committed members of the committee. So we started with secret committees until we were able to control some area and formed open committees to organize the people, to help in intelligence, to help us with some food. And the people had given us their children, so they were part and parcel with us. Alongside the fighting, the NRA developed and introduced a new system of administration based on local resistance councils in which the population participated in running their own affairs and the dispensation of justice. Resistance councils in the village, Muruka, Gomorra. That's how far we needed to go. Gradually, the gallant NRA fighters won over the population and liberated more territory, extending their national reach and eventually 
captured the capital Kampala and expulsion of the forces of the Okelo Junta on January 26, 1986, marking the genesis of the fundamental change Ugandans had hungered for. Bamba. 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 Bamba.